well, as nice the uh, the, the terrace looks. It's all been uh, it's been rebranded with the uh, Love Ponty. Love Ponty, yes, that's. Uh I think it's uh, RCT, uh, one of the new sponsors. Is that true? It is, yeah. Ah, that's she, something something we're finding out now from you, then. Yes, I, I, there's nothing on the website about it. Not yet. No, I yeah. think there's something. I think there's something in the off in there. Yeah, uh, there's a photo shoot. I think on the 24th of Feb. Right. With uh, a couple of players on in Ponty. Um, and last last Monday, Chief Garth White and Ed Sigri were down Ponty again with RCT doing another photo shoot, which I believe is in the Western Mail this week. So here at your first, yeah? Yes, uh, here at your first. So it, it's good for the club, you know, that the uh, RCT are getting, getting on board. Yeah. Putting, uh, like, how much money's gone been put in, I have no idea. But it's, it's good that uh, the local council are That's are fantastic. On board. It's fantastic, because after all, they own this ground, I know, uh, yeah. to be told, don't they? They do. Well, Richard Langmead, um, go, you've been here a while, haven't you? On and off? On and off, yeah. They started when I was 17 with the youth. Yeah. Uh, so as I come out of youth then, such a good senior team here that uh, there was no opportunities so I moved uh, who was who, who, I mean you're an outside half uh, outside half originally weren't you what, no what? I was centre originally you were centre were you centre right. youth and you had the likes of uh, Steve Lewis Kerry Jones Jason Lewis just coming through <sighs> you know good quality centres Ponty Ponty legends yeah. well this is true so um, and uh, of course Jinx was at uh, 10 so I, I mean, no offence, but you're hardly <laughs> getting. No one's going to replace no, him, really. No, they? No in the pantheon of Ponty <laughs> players, he's so far away at the top. You don't get much uh, better than that, do you? No, not really. So I, I moved back to uh, my local club then, Lanchester. Yeah. And uh, I played. I think it was a season there at centre, and then they moved me to out to half. And uh, the rest they say is history. Uh, I went from there to Triorki. Uh, Four seasons, I think, in Triorki. And you've got a distinction at Triorki, haven't you? The uh, one of the one of the highest scoring players in the Welsh leagues. I was at the time, yes. In the world, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know about that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I enjoyed my time at Triorki. You know, just uh, was, as they as their dream was coming uh, coming down, I uh, I went up there. I oh, never. But uh, I yeah, enjoyed it. You know, great club, played some some great players. Uh, at the time when I was there. The uh, Ponty Academy was in uh, operation, and the yeah. likes of Gethin Jenkins, uh, Matthew Reese yeah. came up to play. As we have the academy players now, they came up there and played with us up there. So it was nice to sort of see their careers starting out, really. I mean, th- those you talk about those guys. I mean, the legends of Welsh rugby now. Yeah. But are, are you? I mean, Matthew Reese, current captain, and Gethin is obviously Mellon's uh, m- just missed out on being in the squad because of injury. Yeah, no. But he would have been in without a doubt. Oh, that's child, though, yeah. Um, it, could you tell back then? I mean, was oh, it? Yes, you, you could tell straight away. Because Smiler, Smiler, Matthew Reese was a, was a scrap of a thing, wasn't he? But he was there was a there was a lot of there was a lot of punchy about him. He was uh, yeah. Well, funny enough, uh, the year I, I won Supporters Player of the Year up there, and the following year, Matthew dropped Reece that in. Nice, dropped that in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think of that all week. <laughs> I bet you have, right? Uh, and the following year, Matthew Reese won it. Yeah, you know, and I don't think he played the full season with us. But you could see then you just quality class act. Same with Gethin, you know, quality players. And it's just great to be playing with them. Oh no doubt. No doubt. I mean they, they must have been what, seventeen, eighteen at the time? I think 16? they were about, no, they were about eighteen, nineteen at the time. Were they? Yeah. And I remember the following year then they sort of well, I remember Smiler coming here, and um, it was so funny. He come in with big gold chains on his neck oh, whenever yeah. he's, you know, gold gold bangles <laughs> as well at the works. But um, well, I, I, last time I seen him, I think he's moved away from our face. <laughs> I bet, yeah, I bet. <laughs> he's a bit bigger than he uh, oh, th- than he was back then. Both of them are big, big fellas. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, you've um, you came back here then. What two thousand and three? First, uh, Four? first year we went semi professional. Two thousand and three then. Yeah, because I'd. Um, I left Triorkia and I linked up with Lampley Vardra and Justin Bunnell was ah, yeah, of course. to Lampley Vardra. Yeah, yeah. So um, and then I just he came down then and yeah, of course. trained all pre-season and uh, lucky enough to get uh, a place in the squad then. What was the... I, not many boys here. I mean, I think half Harford's probably Harford the only the, one who was here at the time, at the I start, think. Harford was the only one. Yeah. Um, what oh, was the atmosphere? Well, oh, Wayne O'Connor was Wayne as well. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Was you? Then he went off to Australia, I think, didn't he? That's right. For a season, he yeah. spent on walkabout. That's it. Uh, not in the walkabout, but yeah. walkabout. <laughs> um, what was the atmosphere like here at the time? Because 
obviously it was a, it was a different kettle of fish for us. It was I know support was a bit odd at the time because yeah. we weren't sure what the heck was going on. Well, it's, no, it's, it's pretty much the same for the players. No, it was just a, it was a new beginning. Yeah. You know, for Ponty, that's so many years of uh, this being top. top well, the echelon, really, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden, you've you've got that taken away. You've got the Warriors. All the top quality players gone to the Warriors. And uh, Ponty sort of had to build a new side. And I've got to be honest, we've, since 2003, we've just gone from strength to strength again. It's uh, it's quite remarkable. Um, we had a bit of a dip in about 2005, I think, and then we've sort of surged back up after that. I mean, 2006, the, the Conicum Nolte Cup final was, was something else. Because you were you were in the squad at that point, weren't you? Squad, but you didn't yeah. you didn't play on the day. I didn't play on the day. You no, know, I, I missed out on the two finals. But you know, Dice Flanagan played. You know, another another quality player. It's, it must be difficult for uh, for an old dad such as yourself at the time to uh, well, to watch a youngster just. You know, it is it's difficult. We're going through it now. You know, with uh, but in a different role for me. I was a manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got to tell the players that uh, they're not involved. But but back then, you're disappointed, obviously. But uh, the bigger picture is Ponty looking at them. And Ponty doing well. And what atmosphere that night you must have been. Well, uh, I think we, when we the first year we lost, so we stopped off in uh, Tonga when I saw the way back. It was a bit sombre, but the, the mood was highlighted when uh, we decided discovered we'd left uh, Sned in the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> so we stopped off in Tonga and uh, about half hour later, and he comes, the usual self, and then laughing and joking. But uh, the year we won the cup, when we came back into the in the clubhouse after. Just, uh, something else. Something else. It's always the same with the fans here. Yeah. I remember last year in the semi final, walking out to you, going to uh, pretend the atmosphere in the club, mm. hairs on the back of your neck. Oh, you shivers. Think yeah. right now. And then we didn't do so well down there, do we? <laughs> What's that about? What, what is it with? What is it with that team? Bogey team, isn't it? I think it's all attitude, to be honest. With you. you know. Because Quinn's duffed us up on, on Tuesday and, and I, I couldn't be there because of work, but I gather it was a... Uh, we second best in all departments on the night. You know, we, we hadn't played for two weeks. No, that's true. But in, that's true. in the two weeks we hadn't played, we'd, we'd managed the boys well. We'd um, we sent a lot of boys out to play for their dual clubs just yeah. to get game time. And uh, the train says we had it gone well. So we thought going into the game, you know, we were well prepared. But I think it's just a mental thing. Whether it's because we hadn't won down it before, they were bottom of the league. Just but a three, three pointer. I mean, it's something else. That's nothing. That, that's unlike anything we've heard of this season because this season has been. I yeah. one of those weird seasons where it's just gone so right. You can't, you can't put a finger on it. Or well, can you put a finger on it? Well, I, th- I think it's the uh, the collective spirit we've got here this year. It's, it's always, always been here. But we sat down at the end of. Um, Last season, myself, Chief, uh, Paul, and a couple of senior players, and we realised towards the end of last season that um, the bond had sort of start, was starting to break. So we were quite conscious to, uh, for the start of the season, to get that back in place. Mm. You know, we brought a few players in, and it, it's uh, quite tight, you know. It's an extremely. I mean, the guys. I, I think Garen Lucas was. Uh, Gary Lucas actually got quite emotional in his interview with me earlier in the season. <laughs> he's, uh, he's quite an emotional character anyway, yeah, is, but yeah. um, just the, the love, the sheer bloody empathy and love for this club is just it's remarkable. You don't you don't see it. I don't think you see it anywhere else. You don't, you don't. And that's just not from, from the players, the coaching staff, Di Bricks, the, co- the, the kit man, Stuart down there. Everybody wants to be part of Ponopri. Um Do you know what it is? What is this thing that's here? I just, I, I don't, I just think it's part of Preeth. I just wanted to be a part of this. Because uh, I said you go to other places and you don't see this anywhere else, I don't think. Yeah, and what, what is this? I mean, it's just... Uh, I, can't, I can't put my... I've never able to put my finger on the question, I think. Well, this is it. Yeah. If, if we could bottle this, or this, whatever this <laughs> is... I mean, Humbers is uh, Simon Humbers bought into it, hook, line, and sinker, isn't he? It's, well, uh, with Simon, um, when I signed him, I said I was off because we signed a lot of boys on two-year contracts. Yeah, I mean, I've very shrewd move. Well, I'll come back down. Yeah, go on, go on, go on. So I offered Simon a two-year contract, and all fairness, he said, "Look, I only signed for one year." He said, "I don't know whether I'm going to like Bonaparte. You're going to like me. 
and where they settled with work and that. And uh, about November time, he came on to me and said, Langers, can I have that second? <laughs> <laughs> so, so did you say, yeah, for, right from now, so I've got you until... Uh... Yeah, that, that, that's sorted. But uh, obviously with the change we had last season with John Z going to his part-time role yeah. with the sevens equipment, uh, Chief come on as head coach, we sat down and we sort of devised a two or three year plan where we wanted to sort of take ourselves. Um, and we targeted a lot of players on a two year deal. So we've got stability going forward. Um, obviously the new players coming in now this season, Lewis Jones. Mm -hmm. Uh, Who is ours now? Our player, yeah. Yeah, Chris Phillips is ours. ours I mean, our player, so. so is Ed, and yeah. wow. <laughs> you know, he's been a revelation six. You know, he's a real character. Uh, so he's it's quite, quite frightening, actually. <laughs> I'm 32, and he's about 12, and he, he scares me. I know. So, uh, yeah, these players are going to be the future going forward for Pond Prix. Some future. I know. You know. We've got the, the academy youngsters coming through as well. I know. But the thing about those academy players, once they come here, yeah. They don't want to go anywhere else. No. They well, love it. I, I've watched uh, I watched Will Griff play. Um, I, I mean, I've caught highlights of the under-20s game because obviously the BBC cameras couldn't be there because uh, something got stuck under a bridge or something. I can't, can't work it out. But Will Griff, I mean... Uh, well, where, how, where, how do they breed them? Well, <laughs> you know, a Valley's boy as well. From, uh, yeah, Porth from boy, isn't he? Cummer boy. Porth Cummer. You know, but... They do all, the, all their training is done throughout the day with the Blues Academy. You know, coming into this environment, mixing with these players, playing with these players on a Saturday, mm. that's only going to improve them, and I think it's showing. I agree. With, you know, you got Will Griff, Smokey, Corey, Matthew Screech, Callum Thomas, Sheppy, all played here this season, all part of the under 20 setup. So I think that speaks volumes for, for Pona I, I, I don't know what to add to that. Um, the. The, the production line is obviously quite strong within the academy, and, and I mean these boys are local boys as well. I mean, but Lewis Lewis Jones is a bad eye boy, Rivera, boy. you know, uh, Rivera and Gatholo School. Bello. Yeah, yeah, of course, they're all local boys, and the, you know, we've, we've got very few non-local boys within the within the set period. Nagsy and Ambers are the ones to stand out, yeah, really. Yeah, two uh, international players. <laughs> international, like. Yeah. Um, the youth setup. I know that this scene has been a bit different with the youth setup. You've actually brought them into training. Um, uh, is that certain individuals are bringing through like you know you've got two two good coaches with um, with the youth in Simon and Andy obviously they they recognise talent mm. so they say to us look can this boy come training just so he can sort of see what uh, what being part of Pona Breath first team yeah, is all, all about. about I know that's just going to benefit them going forward for the youth as well so uh, yeah we sat down with them at the start of the season and told them what we outlined we wanted for them yeah. and they bought into it you know it's, good, it's a development process for them because the two new coaches new yeah this sure year. sure. so but again it's plans and uh, going forward is quite healthy for the club and if they're good enough they're old enough aren't they That's I it. mean you know it, you may not you may not put them straight in from the youth to the seniors but you know, unless unless they're a revelation like boys like Fussell yeah. uh, used to be um but you could theoretically farm them out to Trioki or Ronda or well that's what the dual system is there for yeah and exploit it, isn't it? Yeah. You've got to. Those players are going to benefit more playing um, local rugby mm. week in, week out, than sitting on a bench or just twiddling their thumbs here. Because oh, yeah. when they come, when they call, they want to play. They match fit. They they're used to taking you said, the bumps, and uh, it's just going to benefit us. And on a personal level, I'd argue that that's the case throughout the um, throughout the entire pyramidic tier of Welsh rugby really boys should not be sitting on benches what, getting what, splinters what's the point what's the point of that how are they going to improve as rugby players I agree you know? I agree just sit, sitting on sitting down train all week don't do nothing on a Saturday yeah. can't see the point of that no it's the 23rd man one that gets me as well when you fly over as reserve um, <laughs> that, that just that, that uh, anyway well say, say now we, when we went up to Doncaster we, we took two uh, 23rd and 24th man yeah just in case someone pulls up in the warm-up. Ah, I know, suppose. I happened suppose. Before, you know, Adam Thomas done in Clandebury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up, so we had to put someone on the bench. Yeah, good point. So, you, you know, you've got to cover all bases. And the Doncaster game. Incredible. Yes. Absolutely incredible. Well, I interviewed um, I interviewed Bully straight afterwards, and he was... I, and, um, and Savage, actually. And they were both uh, both slightly emotional, I think, and both uh, both totally taken aback. I'm just thinking about how the ears on the back of my neck are standing up. 
walked. The first thing that got me, obviously, the, the supporters on the far terrace after the game. We went, the players would give a wave, incredible support. We had our uh, group huddle after the game. And as we were walking off to the change rooms, it must have been four or five deep either side of the yeah. tunnel and the cheering. So that was the first thing that uh, got me. And the next thing, when I walked upstairs, I walked upstairs on my own, I think, to have food. And I came in through the door, and the place erupted singing Ole Ole. Wall, wall of sound, man. Wall of, for the, I was thinking, Christ, I'm just the manager, you know. These 22 players have been out there, put the, the bodies on the line. In fairness, oh, Langers, you've put a squad together along with John Z and Chief, so it's, uh, it's, it's no small part due to you guys. Yeah, but you say, you look at it and you think, I'm part. I'm part of the. You are part, of, part of the squad. So you're an intrinsic part of this. I you just appreciate then what the, what these supporters see that incredible. Amazing, eh? Oh. I'm expecting. I'm expecting a big crowd here yeah, today. Yeah, should be a good, good crowd today. I've uh, I've I've pinged enough on Facebook, so I mean <laughs> it should get across to people eventually. Well, you know, you got two of the best supported teams in the league here today. I think so. Arguably, definitely, yeah. definitely. So looking forward to it. And uh, Richard Langmead going forward, uh, team manager now. What's the uh, are there any aspirations? Further uh, this uh, further this fledgling career of yours, or? Uh, well, obviously got a full time job as well, so it's difficult. This because you're G Carpentry, isn't it? Yeah, you're a manager with them, are you? Manager with them, yeah. Right. But that, uh, let's say that's full time. This takes up uh, quite a bit of time as well. So that's full time. This is love. Oh yeah, this is. Uh, this is incredible, I've got to be honest. We come back after playing you, and you you realise when you're playing what such a special place is, and you come back as a manager then, and so to be in charge of, of the squad is uh, another level again. And uh, I, I love uh, every minute of it. You know, getting about 22 calls a day from Chief. <laughs> uh, I don't doubt that for uh, one minute. Does John, Z, does John Z constantly call when he's abroad as well? Um, we keep in contact when he's abroad, I've got to be honest. But uh, he's quite tight, so you know if he phones me, it costs me money. If I phone him, it costs me money as well. So uh, you don't send ten euro off him much, but he does. Uh, he does email a fair bit. Hanging again. Well, you know, you've got two co- coaches there who've been with the club for donkey's years. Well, between them, coming up to forty years, I reckon. And they've still got the same passion now yeah. as when they first started playing. And, you know, and that rubs off on uh, like myself. And all the players as well, because they can see how passionate those two are, and it just filters through to everyone else. Do you imagine that come the end of the season, I mean, provided we just keep winning and winning and winning, provided we don't need more blips like the Quins and uh, and uh, the Bridgend Athletic, that was a strange one as well. But do you imagine that by the end of the season, you're going to be inundated with CVs from players from all over the world wanting to come and sample uh, this? Do you the, get that? Do you yeah, get that player every, CVs? Every season, you get the. Uh, Emails and CVs from players from all over the world. Players you've never heard of. Never heard of. <laughs> Coaches Brilliant. as well. Come. They, they seem to think that Pont de is a, a professional setup and they're going to earn mega bucks here by coming coaching and playing. But uh, no, we we don't. We tend to look for the players we want to look for. Yeah. You know, sometimes a CV comes in, we take uh, a bit of interest in it, but otherwise we go out and look for who we want. I imagine that you, you boys are shrewd enough to, to recognise a name in the in the papers and, yeah. and keep an eye. I, I'm sure I'm sure you've got such close links with local clubs that that well, there are names coming through and yeah, you, we've got uh, all the local clubs, you know, all the coaches. So if there's a there's a quality player there, they they, sort of, they phone us and tell us, then we go and have a look at them and uh, go from there really. I think I'm going to have to wrap this up now because I'm going to fit a 15 minute on YouTube, oh, a 15 minute video on YouTube. No, I'm enjoying this. Um, good luck today, and, and good luck for the rest of the season, and good luck with with everything. And let's let's win all of them for Christ's sake. Well, we try our best to. I've got to be honest. It'd be magical, though, wouldn't it? Oh, it would be great. But uh, especially the Beck. Well, that would be nice. That'd be something else. Uh, we've had a good run in that so far, and the top of our group against uh, some top quality English and Scottish sides is. Uh, well, very pleasing. Langers, not only did we top the group, we won every flipping every, game. Every game. No, I don't think anyone else has done that. No, I don't think they have. Because the Cornish Pirates were, they lost, didn't they? To, yeah. To Newport, I believe. But, uh, yes, so last year was a bit of a, a learning curve for us, but this year, we've gone on and taken it, uh, grasped with both hands and said, won every game. I think that the key element for me is, um, what, what, what I see other teams, and I see Neath doing it, is killing off a game. 
but just be vicious and destroy and, and take the destroy the game. Yeah. You know, well, take it, rip it out of the other or rip it out of the opposition's hands. And that's the boys. Boys are our boys are so talented. I, I can't get over it. But they never seem to be quite vicious enough. They got a lot to learn from Sig, I think. Yes. But uh, this. And year, Walters. And who, sorry? And Walters. Oh. <laughs> the worst one I lot, mine is Lewis Jones. Yeah. He's your, he don't stop uh, chops and giving. Good. Everyone. Good. That's, that's what you need, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You need a big dog. Yeah. But th- this year, I think more so than any other years, we we've, we've won games and haven't played well. Mm. And in the past, we would have lost those games. Yeah. Because there's an edge about us and a belief, we've come through. We're, we're not playing well. We've still managed to win the game. And that's happened on quite a few occasions this year. That has happened. So First half against Doncaster wasn't anything to write your own book, but the second half, no. wow. Well, that was a complete turnaround. I was and surprising enough, Chief was very calm in the change room. Never. I he was going to explode, but uh, he was quite calm. Just told the boys to keep hold of the ball. In the second half, no. Same ball. I'd have loved to be in it. Hang on, quite calm. Savage said he ripped the wall down. So um, no, Tuesday night he ripped the wall. Oh right, okay. After the game, <laughs> but uh, Doncaster, he was quite calm. He, what, he said to me he was going to go off one, but then he realised that uh, we hadn't had any ball. Yeah, that's so true. We just wanted to get the ball in our hands and we play. And we scored some. Uh, said we scored a nice try just on half time over Williams, and then uh, three nice tries second half. Fantastic, fantastic. Bonus points to boot. I know. Hey, I, I, as I say, i got to wrap this up. Okay. <laughs> Keep going and going. Um, we'll have a chat later in the season, depending on how we go. Um, either way, we'll have another chat, because this is great. Um, no but good luck today. Pub luck. Thank you very much. Around. And um, oh, let's win this. Let's win this. Try your very best, dude. Cheers, Langers. No problem.